Today in the news, we got some super news, some E3 coverage, and a cyberpunk Neo. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. All right, so let's get... Father? Is that you, Father? Did you come back for Father's Day? Well, my dad isn't back for Father's Day, but you know what is? Memory Express's Dads and Grads sale, which starts this Friday, June 14th, all the way until Monday the 17th. They got great deals on laptops, components, and gaming accessories, so check them out if you're in Canada at MemoryExpress.com. Oh, and they have an e-flyer, so subscribe to that so that you can get the latest deals directly into your inbox. All right, so the RX 5700 series is now out and Nvidia is apparently ready to retaliate and it looks like they're not going to be pulling any punches. About two weeks ago, we got the 16 second teaser on Nvidia's YouTube channel about something super coming. We got absolutely nothing during CES and it looks like the company also ignored us during E3, but new info reveals that some super is indeed coming. That's no surprise, Nvidia probably wanted to see what AMD had in store. Video cards Net, which has been quite an accurate leak source during the uh, last few weeks, got confirmation that four new Turing GPUs would be announced this year. Well, I say new, but they're basically refreshes. According to Von Guru, NVIDIA will host an in-house event on the 21st of June to reveal their new Super Cards. This Super line would include the 2060 Super, 2070 Super, and 2080 Super. A 2080 Ti Super is apparently also being worked on, but it will be revealed at a later date. These GPUs will feature the faster 16 gigabits per second memory upgrade that we heard about previously, but also a core count or a chip upgrade across the series. Von Guru made a prediction on what this chip upgrade might be. The 2060 Super would get a TU-106 that is closer to the 2070 with increased CUDA core count and also 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 to help it compete with the RX 5700. The 2070 Super would get the 2080's TU-104, and the 2080 Super would get the 2080 Ti's TU-102. This prediction is probably based on the fact that the leaks say that the 2080 Ti Super would be revealed later. That card will apparently feature a new TU-102 chip, but it's hard to say what it could be since the Titan RTX is already really close in specs to the 2080 Ti. Maybe it'll just match the specs of the Titan, but keep the uh, 11 gigabytes of memory, since the Titan has 24. Price-wise, I think we can expect the all-new Super line of GPUs to take the place of their regular counterparts with a discount on the non-Super line. Now, this is of course to be taken with a huge grain of salt, but Nvidia was always really quick on the trigger anytime AMD put out something that might threaten their mid to high-end cards. This refresh isn't surprising though, Nvidia's 12 nanometer process is now more mature than ever, so pricing could definitely be adjusted for older cards. This would be an absolutely ruthless move from Nvidia and I honestly love it. And it's all thanks to AMD. If AMD didn't put out the RX 5700s or weren't able to beat the RTX 2060 and 2070, Nvidia would have probably just sat on their hands and delayed the super line. Alright, moving on. I just want to touch on the RX 5700 series real quick. On my last video, I said that the RX 5700 XT was a no-brainer since it was $150 cheaper than the RTX 2070. That was my bad, I got stuck on the Founders Edition pricing of Nvidia's RTX 2070. The XT is only $50 less and that's a lot less of a bargain and honestly makes it much more of a coin flip. If you want ray tracing, you know where to go. If you want a potential boost in performance, then the XT might be what you want. At least the RX 5700 is slightly more of a bargain since we know it actually beats the RTX 2060 consistently at just $30 more. But now that we have those leaks on the super line, those AMD GPUs will probably become completely irrelevant overnight, unless AMD changes their price. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. All right, moving on, we had Nintendo at E3 announcing bombs after bombs, and I mean the good kind. We got Banjo and Kazooie revealed as the next DLC characters for Smash. We got Luigi's Mansion 3, which I definitely plan to play since I haven't played it since the first one on GameCube, and it looks absolutely amazing. The Witcher 3's complete edition is going to the Switch. We got some gameplay footage of Animal Crossing, which seems to have been delayed to March of 2020. And finally, we got a teaser for The Legend of Zelda 
Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. I swear, sequels to the Legend of Zelda games are always so dark. We saw it back in the day with Ocarina of Time. It's sort of a, you know, light game. And then we got this super creepy sequel, which was Majora's Mask. And now this for Breath of the Wild 2. What are you guys excited about from Nintendo? I'd love to know. Let me know down below. And lastly, we got some more info on Cyberpunk 2077, and it just gets more and more impressive. Not only did they reveal that Keanu Reeves would be part of the game as Johnny Silverman, we also got some details like how all the weapons actually have a non-lethal function, and that the game will feature ray tracing at launch. Every time we hear more about this game, we get pretty cool details, and now we finally have the release date of April 16th, 2020. Let's just hope it doesn't get delayed, or at least I'll give it one delay okay one delay is fine to you know make the game better but no more anyways guys that is pretty much it for the news let me know what you thought of the uh, sponsor spot at the start leave a like if you enjoyed it and leave your questions down below if you have any as usual you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel it would be greatly appreciated stay frosty my dudes and i'll see you on the next one by the way did any of you guys play trover saves the universe I really want the game, but I just don't have the money to buy it right now. But it looks really cool. It's uh, Justin Roiland, the guy from Rick and Morty.